Okay. Um, so uh, my name is, my Irish name, my Irish American name is Chris Cullen, Christopher Bird Cullen. Um, uh, that's through my father, uh, Bill. And, uh, and I don't know a lot about my Irish side. I, I, do, I do believe we're from County Wicklow in Ireland. Um, so I hope to one day learn a little bit more about my Irish side. Um, uh, and uh, I'm also uh, adopted uh, Japanese. Uh, that name is Tanaka. Um, and uh, through my stepfather, Mike Tanaka, Michael Shigechi Tanaka. Um, and uh, uh, so, but he didn't, uh, he, you know, he uh, spent his time in Hawaii. Uh, so he uh, didn't know a lot. He didn't really learn a lot about his culture growing up. Um, so he was kind of odd man out of the family, uh, but he's also the one in the family that, that, uh, that declared as a Baha'i. And that's how I found out about the Baha'i faith is through uh, when my stepfather started uh, dating my mother. Uh, and uh, so she learned about it that way and therefore I learned about it. Um, so I, I honor him and, and our family through that way. Uh, we don't have, uh, 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 we're Shinto uh, in that way and we don't have the family sword, unfortunately. My, uh, my, my uncle has it. Uh, so usually the, uh, there's a sword that's passed down and the sword is connected uh, with, the, with the land. Uh, so the land and the sword are one thing. So uh, the person who has the sword owns the land or is connected with the land. Um, as I understand it, I could be wrong. These are just, I, I don't know, I know very little. So just know very little things that I, that I, that I learned over the, over the years. And uh, I'm also uh, supposed to be Mandan as well, which is uh, Hidatsa, which is uh, uh, from North Dakota, Great Lakes area, and uh, part of the uh, mound, near the mound people. Um, I don't know a lot about that ba background either, unfortunately. A lot of things were lost uh, in families due to alcoholism and, and uh, the boarding schools and things like that. So. Uh, my mom didn't really know a lot about that. So there's, a, I, I don't, so I don't really uh, uh, profess it a lot just because I'm not really connected with those families and don't really know about that. So, um, however, I am adopted Diné or Navajo. Uh, uh, my grandfather is from Totalina or was, uh, he, he moved on a few years back to the spirit worlds. Uh, uh, his name is Hank Bainbridge or Henry Bainbridge. Uh, and, our, and our family named through that way is Negeslagai, uh, which basically just uh, in English means, uh, it's kind of like white light or white shield, um, something like that. And uh, I didn't grow up uh, on the, uh, in Arizona uh, on, in the Four Corners area on the Navajo Nation. So I don't know the language. Uh, I'm, I'm just throughout my life, I've tried to learn a little bit here and there. And I took the path of, uh, uh, really, you know, doing a career, you know, and spending my time in the city. And so I didn't, I didn't, uh, learn as much as I probably could have had I, had I lived on, on the nation. Um, uh, so I've had, uh, many, many teachers and I'm really grateful for all of them. And, and there's really honestly too many to list, uh, but I will share a few, um, uh, uh, most of them are, are indigenous Baha'is. So uh, most of them uh, follow both ways, are indigenous, uh, the cultural way and the Baha'i way. And uh, they are not separate. They're one thing and that's what I was taught. Um, they're one reality. Um, and as we're taught, and I believe all of us are Baha'is here, is that correct? I don't wanna be disrespectful to anybody and, and speak about my faith, you know, if there's, okay. So um, in, the, in the Baha'i writings, it's very clear that, uh, that uh, all the uh, messengers or the, what we call wise ones uh, here in Turtle Island, North America, uh, are, are, are all one thing. You know, uh, there's messengers that came to indigenous people on this continent uh, uh, Different by different names, uh, 
Uh, one was white buffalo calf woman is known in, in the Lakotas, you know, in the Dakotas. Uh, and uh, uh, she brought uh, a bunch of ceremonies and some of the ceremonies that she brought to the people was uh, the Anipi ceremony, the sweat lodge. It was renewed and, and given again, um, like a lot of, in a lot of face, uh, there's things that are taken over from previous face um, and are, 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 are uh, renewed and given new life and acceptable for the next cycle. Um, and there's some things that are abrogated. So these are one of the things that was, that, that white buffalo calf woman took because uh, uh, there was sweat lodges already at that time, but she gave a new way of doing it. And also she gave the Sundance ceremony, uh, uh, the, the, the ghost robe ceremony and a few others. And I, I, I won't go into them too much. And then also uh, uh, the peacemaker, the holy man, uh, the peacemaker who brought the Iroquois nations together. Um, they were fighting very severely uh, uh, after the turn of this, uh, uh, you know, in the, probably around, uh, the time of the, uh, what, around 1 to 20 AD in that era. Um, and, uh, he, uh, he brought together all these six tribes of the Iroquois nations and transformed them from bloodthirsty killers to, a united tribe of people with a democratic order. Um, and that democratic order is what we based the, the US Constitution on. So the US Constitution is based on spiritual uh, understandings and beliefs. Um, but they changed it a lot and they left some very important spiritual things out of it. But if you go back to what they call um, the League, the League of Nations, um, uh, that you'll see that, uh, that a lot of these parallels exist. Uh, one of the things about uh, the way you can identify a messenger of God is, is by their words and what they say and do. And if you look at the words of the peacemaker, white buffalo calf woman, and all these other messengers of God, you'll see that there are these parallels, that they're connected. And they say the same thing and they do the same thing. So uh, you know, uh, the peacemaker brought peace and, and democracy. He was the first one to, to do that and, uh, and bring that. So all these things that I'm sharing, all culture and all these things that I'm sharing are from spiritual, have spiritual roots. So everything that, and, and I would even go so far personally to say this, <laughs> is to say that all knowledge in all reality that we understand is from spiritual roots. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna say a little bit about um, uh, our history as human beings. Uh, you know, we all come from uh, families and cultures that have, you know, if you go far enough back, you know, like on my Irish side, if you go far enough back, you'll start to see songs and ceremonies and, and things like that. But all these things have been forgotten. You know, uh, my family and a lot of the European peoples um, and many peoples from all over the world now um, have been divided from their, their ceremonies and their songs uh, because of war. You know, war took over um, approximately about 6,000 years ago, around four or five BC. Uh, nobody knows exactly where it started, uh, but war became a way of life rather than hunting and growing and fishing and things like that. And that way of life spread around the world. And now we're where we're at. And because of war, that disconnected us from our culture, from our, our people. You know, our people forgot our ceremonies and our songs. So, and we see the same thing that happened uh, in this country, see, you know, there was a lot of, in Turtle Island, North America and South America, you know, they were connected with their original culture. And then, uh, you know, people came and, you know, made war with them and, and uh, disconnected them. And now we're all trying to kind of find our way back. 
We're trying to find our way back home. You know, we're trying to figure that out. And as we know, as Baha'is, that's the path. That's the path to help us find our way back to community, to connectivity, to, uh, you know, a connection with each other and uh, with our life and with this universe that we exist in. So these songs and these teachings are all about how we connect with each other and the universe that we live in and how we work with all these things. So the way I was taught is that, uh, that all these things are about relationships. So the, the sacred way, the, the holy way, the spiritual way is about relationships, but it's about relationships with everything. So how we have relationships with, with each other, uh, with ourselves, with everything in our world, all the plants, all the little bugs that are crawling on the ground, all the little birdies that are flying in the sky, you know, um, all our little, our animals, our cats and dogs, you know, uh, the spiritual life is all about how we relate to all these things in our world. And, um, and this is the native way, this is the indigenous way, but it's also the Baha'i way. And as Baha'is, we're learning this as we deepen um, into our faith a little bit more, realizing that, that they are saying, you know, the indigenous way is the same way. Um, and they say a lot of the similar things, um, you know, and, and fortunately for some of us, like myself, there has been many indigenous people who held fast to their, uh, held fast to their culture, despite everything that happened, you know, uh, things that we don't really even want to talk about too much because it's just so hard to talk about. Um, so many people were killed um, and murdered. Um, uh, you know, when, uh, when, when they first set, uh, when, the, when the ships first set, the European sh ships first set uh, on the continent, there were probably well over 50 million people. And a census was taken at the turn of the century near uh, the 1900s, and there was literally only 200,000 people, Indian, Native American people left on this continent. So you're, you're seeing about uh, a, a genocide of almost 50 million people um, were killed. Um, so, you know, it's pretty intense. And, and, and uh, so that's why, um, one of the reasons why I choose to share here is so that that you know this you know will help us make these connections, help us to create these relationships with each other and ourselves, and and these songs and and everything in our life to 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 help rebuild these things because we've been we're children of war, you know we've been living in war for thousands of years, and now we need to figure out what peace looks like, and how to work with each other and really make those connections that have been separated over time through uh, the cultures that we're brought up in, that, you know, these, uh, we have only fragments of these original teachings. So, um, so I'm gonna share a little bit my teachers, the, the people that um, I felt were really uh, important and I certainly am going to miss them and I miss some folks, but for, I ask forgiveness for that at this time for that. But one of the teachers was Phil Lucas, Choctaw and Crow. Uh, uh, he was an incredible person, and, and, I, and him along with Lee Brown, who's Eastern Cherokee, uh, Dr. Lee Brown is a doctorate in education. Uh, he's living in Vancouver now. Uh, Phil Lucas has moved on to the spirit world, and uh, uh, they were uh, very significant in my life and allowed me to take part in a, uh, a NIPI, a sweat lodge ceremony. Uh, when I was pretty young, about 16 or 17, um, so, uh, when I sat in that lodge is, is, and heard those songs, man, my, I just felt it. My, my blood just like, it just energized. I felt like I had electricity in my veins and I just, I, I just understood and felt it. And I just, I get this, I get this. And that's part of our connection, you know, to our relatives that, you know, if you go far enough back, once again, we all had our own songs and ceremonies. I, I don't, I'm personally not, probably don't have a lot of Native American DNA, right? But I made that connection. And it's because these songs are spiritual things. They come from spiritual teachers. And, 
and and we make these connections we can connect things through our i was taught that we can connect through things through our dna you know through our connections to our families way way back and sometimes like dna will all of a sudden pop up in weird ways like you'll have you know people that are all black hair and then all of a sudden someone will come out with blonde hair you know and everybody will be looking around <laughs> hey <laughs> who who wasn't who wasn't sleeping with the right person <laughs> you know so you know that's uh you know that happens and that's dna it's amazing so oftentimes some of us will have this dna that will pop up and we'll make these connections to these songs you know and and like you said that's why we're attracted to them you know so i'm honored to share with you these things and and hopefully you'll take them in a good way so um and uh, there are many, many other teachers. Uh, Felix Charging Whirlwind, he's Sakanju, uh, Brule from uh, Rosebud, South Dakota, uh, o Ogallala, uh, oh, sorry, he's uh, Brule, not Ogallala. Um, I, I don't, I still am learning a great deal as we all are and will continue to do so. Um, and uh, 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 yeah, Felix uh, was uh, uh, gifted me with my first eagle feathers when I was about 17 um, and was teaching me about the Sundance ceremony, although I'm not a Sundancer um, or, or a pipe carrier. These are things that uh, have never been things that, that came to me. Um, and, uh, and that's, you know, the, w they're, they're just not meant for me at this time. So, you know, you, you, whatever comes to you is, is meant for you. Uh, and, uh, my good brother, my spiritual brother, uh, Mark Wood Hull, uh, uh, Tiapai, uh, he was given the name Tiapai from a, a respected elder who is now also in the spirit world, uh, Vi Hilbert, uh, who, who was a very respected elder in this area, uh, was one of the last real traditional elders who spoke uh, the, some of the original languages. And, uh, um, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but my friend, my brother would describe it like if uh, if we were in uh, if we were in the old world, uh, she would be like the queen around here. <laughs> but there's no queens, you know, no uh, Cherokee princesses either. <laughs> so, um, uh, but he was given this name, and you know, he was uh, my good brother Mark was very sincere. Uh, we got into a lot of trouble when we were younger, let me tell you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, through these ceremonies and through the, uh, these spiritual ways and, and learning about uh, spirituality and religion and, and the Baha'i faith, we both eventually declared as uh, community members of the Baha'i faith. And uh, he was uh, one of those real extreme people. And he uh, really, he had dreams and these dreams would take him all over the place. He had dreams of, of the Hopi and, and Diné and Navajo people. So he went, did, lived, moved down there and lived there. And he learned from a bunch of elders throughout his life. He would travel all over and learn from all these elders. And he went to South Dakota and also learned um, there in Wambli, uh, was a Sundancer, learned how to Sundance, you know, those ways. And he was a Sundancer for 20 years in that way. Also Baha'i, obviously. And uh, so he was also one of my teachers. And then, of course, Hank Bainbridge. Uh, who adopted me as his grandson. Uh, and he, uh, Navajo Diné, uh, was also adopted uh, by a white family and that's where that name Bainbridge comes from. But he also went back and learned his traditions and his ways uh, and, uh, and then also learned some of the medicine ways, what they call the Native American church where people stay up all night and pray and they use different medicines uh, while they do that. And uh, it's a healing ceremony usually. And a lot of people are healed from a lot of things through that way. Uh, uh, everything from cancer to warts, you name it. it you know, they, they take care of things. Um, of course, part of that teaching is that, you know, it's not just these, uh, these spiritual ceremonies, but also, you know, you gotta, go to the, you gotta go to the doctor sometimes or you need certain herbs and things like that. So it's a, it's a mixture of all these things but my grandfather Hank Bainbridge was taught in that way and he also taught me and my my spiritual brother Mark 
So my spiritual brother, he adopted it as his son. So in the, in the native way, you adopt different ways. It, you don't have paperwork, you do ceremonies. And, uh, and your, your uh, adoption or, or your relationship is different. Um, uh, so Hank adopted me as his grandson, but adopted my spiritual brother, Mark, as his son. So it doesn't really have to do with necessarily the, tra the traditional lines of things. It has to do with uh, more your relationship with that individual and what that looks like, right? Um, uh, so in the, in, in the traditional ways, quite oftentimes it's the uncle that teaches uh, uh, the nephew about spiritual ceremonies. So it's not always the father or the mother that will teach the, 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 the child or the niece or the nephew. It's usually the, the, the uncle, the aunties. The uncle and the aunties are the ones who teach um, usually those things. So if, if someone was, became my teacher and we had that relationship, they might adopt me as their nephew, right? So that's how these things work, right? Um, and uh, so I got to travel a lot with Hank and we had many journeys and he would do ceremonies and he would pitch his tent and he had uh, these, this staff that they use in the Native American church and, and these, some of these other healing ceremonies. And he put that staff outside of the, the tent when we would go places. Um, and he would, he would say, that means the doctor is in. <laughs> so, you know, so people would know, you know, they would know when they saw that staff that he was a medicine person and he was a doctor. So the minute he would get there, people would start coming to his tent and, and talking to him and say, hey, I kind of need this. I'm having these issues. And, you know, and people would, you know, help out. So he helped a lot of people in the time that I knew um, with these ceremonies. So these ceremonies are really strong. These songs are really strong. They're very powerful. Um, you know, um, and I wanted to share a little bit about, um, you know, uh, in the, uh, I studied a little bit of yoga um, and a uh, tiny little bit of Sanskrit. <laughs> Very tiny. Uh, 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 and uh, I know from those ways, you know, in the, in the, in the philosophy, in the yogic texts, uh, um, way, way old, they talk about the beginnings of the universe. Um, and, and, feel, and if you know more than this, feel free to add or correct me or whatever. Um, but as I understand it, they say that the song, the universe was sung into existence, was brought into existence by a sacred song. And, uh, and the, the, before the universe existed, it was like a seed, uh, a seed of potential. I think the word is bindu. Um, and then, and then, uh, and then it was sung, the, the sacred song was sung and, it, and, it, and this seed sprouted into three hearts. And these three sprouts were sounds. And those sounds are the A, U, and the M, the Om. And that was the very foundation and the first sounds of the entire universe that, that was sung into existence. And if you look at physics, um, if you look at physics and learn a little bit about physics, and uh, you'll start to see that they'll tell you that, and even Tesla said this, Tesla said that if you want to understand something about the universe, start looking at things in frequencies, that all things are sound and energy and sound, you know, sound is vibration. So it's this energy of this vibration and movement. Um, so these songs are very powerful. Um, so when these medicine people, they talk about, you know, a lot of people, they don't understand how these, how they, how they can, uh, heal people or, or how they can help people or, or how these songs can be of any benefit. Um, but if you look at the foundation of the universe in physics, you'll see that that energy is, is sound and, and movement and vibration. Um, and it's the very core of existence itself. So these, these medicine people say they work with uh, the powers of all things. Um, and, and all things are described as, as these directions. They're broken down and understood uh, as the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, uh, sky, earth, and then the seventh direction, the heart. 
Um, so these seven directions that are talked about in the indigenous community, and they say each of these directions have powers and teachers. And, and so it's a, way of it's a way of understanding the universe in this microcosm. Um, have anybody, has ever, anybody ever heard of the medicine wheel? So that those four directions, yeah. Um, so that, that's what these are. And, and um, a lot of indigenous people from all over the world uh, see the universe in similar ways. And there's colors for these four directions. Like if you look at in the Dakotas, they have, they have uh, these colors for these four directions in the circle. You'll see a lot of these like uh, pretty common these days. If you, know, you look up medicine wheel and you'll see this, these four directions. And different tribes have different colors for some of these directions, but they're all saying and meaning the same thing. And, and even in, in Kenya, they have, uh, Lee Brown shared with this when he was in Kenya, that they have the same circle and they have the same colors in, in the Dakota, as they do in the Dakotas. And they mean the same thing. Uh, he was down there. Um, so, uh, You'll see these connections, and, and I'm going to answer your question, Neda, here in a minute um, regarding the drum. I'm going to share a little bit about that now uh, and, and why it is that people use the drum. Uh, once again, you'll see these, uh, you'll see the drum all over the world, all over the world as uh, people are using it for songs and ceremonies, but different types of drums. You know, you'll see different drums. You'll see uh, uh, octagonal drums. You'll see... Um, frame drums, real skinny frame drums, like up in uh, the Inuit, up in uh, Alaska, way up north, and all the way up in the circumpolar regions, they have these really flat but big drums um, with a big stick connected to them. And, and they, they hit those drums, you know, so everybody has different types of drums, you know, that they use for ceremony and, and, and spiritual connection. Um, and, uh, as I understand it, and as I was taught, uh, the drum, and, and this is what I, what I hear from many elders from all over the place um, saying similar things, is the drum is like the heartbeat. It's the human heartbeat. Um, but it's also the heartbeat of the universe and the heartbeat of the earth. So when we play that drum, we're connecting our heart to the, to the planet, to all things, to the earth, and all things and all our living creatures, all the trees, all the birdies, tweet, tweet. <laughs> and uh, all the little crawly things on the ground, all the little guys just cruising along doing their own thing. We're connecting to all those things. We're through that drum, through that heart. When we play that drum, we're, we're reaching out. We're reaching out and connecting to all our relatives. So in the Dakotas, they say, Matakwiasin. Um, which means all my relations. And it's the most sacred word coming from that area. Because um, it means that it's this way of, in a short way of saying, we're all connected. We're all one reality. Um, all people, all things. Um, a lot of indigenous people knew that there were people of other colors around the planet before they ever came here. And they were told stories about it. Um, uh, so that they knew. They knew that there were other people and, and they knew that because of these other colors in the direction, they knew they weren't the only one on the planet. So they would pray for all people and the connectedness of all things, even though they hadn't met them yet. But they knew that one day they would because a lot of the stories and uh, uh, what, you know, they call prophecy, right? Um, and prophecy, all prophecy has come from the time of Adam to the Bob. You know, the Bob was the end of the prophetic cycle. And now we're in the cycle of fulfillment. Um, so there's many prophecies from the native world as well, as you know, who talk about um, the future and what's gonna be happening, and the possibilities of what humankind might deal with, you know. So you'll also hear some of these things, people talk about some of these things from time to time, and I'm not gonna go too much into it, um, but I will say this is the Hopis uh, share that we at one time, many, 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 many years ago, um, it's not exact, nobody knows exactly when, 
could be 50,000, 100,000, could be a million years. I don't really know. Um, uh, they say that we were all one people and we were all on one continent. And they said that at one point the, the creator came to human beings and said, I'm going to divide you. I'm going to divide you. And you're going to go in the four directions. And as you go in the four directions, as I send you in the four directions, you're going to live for many, 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 uh, many times, many, many, many years. Um, uh, I can't remember the exact word they used, but, you know, thousands and thousands of years. And as you live in these areas, you're going to learn, you're going to give in sacred teachings. And these sacred teachings, we're going to call the guardianship. So the, these sacred teachings that, uh, that human beings were given as they go in the four directions. Um, and over time, they're gonna learn this guardianship and learn about themselves and about this teaching. And these teachings are of the four directions, right? Um, so in short, uh, each, uh, each group of people started learning over time and they were also told as they learn these sacred teachings, their skin would change color. So that happened to people, their, their skin changed color over time. And as they learned these sacred teachings, but they were also warned that not to let, you know, uh, to take lightly these sacred teachings, that if they were to, if they were to take lightly these sacred teachings um, or to disrespect them, um, that, that the whole world could suffer and almost die. Um, so, we know that some of these sacred teachings were forgotten um, over time. Uh, so, you know, uh, but what they were also told is that there would come a time where the world, where the people would be brought back together again as one human family. Um, and the Hopi say this, and, the, and they say, this is that time. We're in that time. And as Baha'is, we know that, you know, but these are, these are oral histories. Of, these are prophecies that have been shared over thousands of years. So they were talking about the unity of humankind 50,000 years ago, right? So, um, and they were talking about the time that we're living in right now. <laughs> and there's a lot of detail to some of these stories. They don't freak you out <laughs> once you start learning them. You'll be like, wow, how did they know that, right? But they, they explained them in such a way that, you know, that only they could understand at that time, you know, and a lot of people didn't really understand them until they actually happened. And then when they happened, they would recognize them and say, okay, that's what those, those things mean. And that's how prophecy often is. Um, but there are guideposts, there are guideposts to help us along the way to understand uh, how to get to where we need to go. Um, but so, these four teachings, this guardianship, these directional teachings are, are really at the heart and center of a lot of indigenous cultures. Um, so you'll see this all over. And I got to take part in a, a Mayan four direction ceremony uh, many years ago, uh, back in the 90s. Uh, uh, Victor Ioto, one of the chiefs of the Mayan people, um, I got to know he was also Baha'i, also indigenous Baha'i, and shared, shared with me and my friends and did a ceremony at my house. It was a four direction ceremony. It was really powerful and beautiful. Um, and then we also did a healing circle, uh, similar to the one we're gonna do on Sunday. Uh, I do these healing circles after my grandfather, Hank Bainbridge. And, and uh, so I've been doing them and, and I carry this, try to carry this on and, and try to do what I can. But let me just say, me in comparison to my grandpa, man, He's like a brain surgeon. He was like a healer. He knew what up. Um, I am just like, I'm barely a candy striper. You know, I, I'm barely fit to clean up beds. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you now. So some of these people, their knowledge is incredible. And what they know and understand is, is just so far beyond most people's understanding. And that's why um, indigenous people are so misunderstood. And, and, and a lot of these teachings come orally too. A lot of things aren't written down. So, you know, uh, that's why it's so important to have aunts and aunties and uncles and, 
and grandmas and grandpas to teach us these things. And that's why uh, in the native communities, grandparents are, are treated with the utmost respect. Um, for instance, in, uh, uh, in the Iroquois nation, I was telling you about you know, how Daiganawida, the, peace, the, peace, uh, the peacemaker brought those people together and gave them teachings. Uh, well, the highest order, the highest order in, um, uh, in, the, in the community and in their democracy is the women's council. And even beyond the women's council is the grandmother's council. So they're like the Supreme Court, you know, that, that's where the buck stops. Grandmas and grandpas, especially grandmas. If grandma says something, it's done. Forget about it. <laughs> don't even, don't even say a word. Don't, doop, doop, don't, don't even, doop, just don't do it. <laughs> the grandma says something, just doop, don't say nothing, you know. It's, it's kind of law, that's the way it is. And in a lot of indigenous communities, not just in this, in this, in North America, but all over the world, you know, is like that. And if you go to different communities all over the world, it's the same. And I'm sure that uh, in, in many different cultures that you guys are from, um, it's, there's, you'll see similar things, you know, and it's just the things that I've seen and, and heard about, um, but it's, it's definitely here and very prevalent in, in the North America, so. So that's kind of the order of order of things. Um, is there any questions so far? Any thoughts? How are we feeling? How are we doing? I appreciate you sitting through this. You know, I'm talking a lot. So, uh, I, and, uh, you know, you, you're very patient and you came here to learn and, and, uh, and we will get to the song. <laughs> but, but I just wanted to, you know, share, share some things here and, and, uh, and I'll share more about the drum here in a sec, but does anybody want to share anything? Any thoughts or feelings of how we doing? I just wanted to say that it was so, in, in Palau, there's this tradition that we do when, when you have your first child. And so in my family, my mom was kind of, I guess she apprenticed was the word and she would go and find the herbal like plants and then she and my grandmother would um, essentially kind of give me a bath for like nine days straight after your firstborn um, child and I just remember you know and my grandmother was like she was the head of the clan so I mean, I could not be feeling up to it that day, but like you said, you know, when grandma says something, that's, that's it. You just kind of do that. But it was also a really special time. Um, I feel very lucky to have been able to see that and, and be and experience that. It's, it was probably more educational to actually go through that than to have just grow up and, and read and hear your grandparents talk about that um something really special about it and like my mother would go before sunrise and they have to pick certain plants and in only certain areas but before they do they have to sing a song um i don't know it just the, your story is just so beautiful and i feel somehow just connected even though i don't really know you but yeah, yeah i just feel like it's so sweet thank you uh -huh. yeah um part of the you know some of the the medicine ways from different communities um they explain that um you know um and this you you, you share some really great things and, and they explain that everything in your world you know it has a spirit you know that we're actually not really living in the real world. We're not, the spiritual world is the real world. We're living in like a reflection of the real world. It's like we're living in the mirror. We're living in the, in, you know, it's everything's turned opposite, right? The spiritual world is the light and the, and the, and the vision and the, the image, whereas we're just the reflection of that image. And, that, and so that we're taught that way that everything has a spirit uh, so everything is uh, has a being, you know. Everything is alive, 
even the even the stones they call them the stone people or uh, or grandmothers they call them grandfathers and grandmothers the stones um, and in some in many ways that's re real because over thousands of years uh, people have passed away and been buried and their dirt became those stones you know but they they use those stones in ceremonies uh, the, the sweat lodge ceremony we use certain stones but the stone people so there's a we make a relationship with the stone people we make a relationship with uh the plants so as you're saying your grandma sings to those plants because we're making that connection we're 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 talking to it we're saying relative hello yeah we need your help relative we need your help we need we need your goodness, the gifts that you are, that makes you who you are, you know, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a dandelion or whatever, you know, and anyone else would be like, there's crazy people singing to plants, what are they doing? <laughs> you know, but we're yeah. singing to this plant, we're connecting it, we're making that connection, because as human beings, we're taught that we are uh, uh, like, um, in some sense, I, I, I don't want to say this too much, but the fruit of the earth, you know, mm -hmm. we're like a combination of everything in the earth. And, and if we understand science as we know it now, we evolved from a very small microorganism and went through all these different phases. Uh, one, at one point, humans were like lizards, you know, at one point, humans uh, looked differently, you know, but we were always humans as described in the Baha'i faith and clarified in, in the writings. And we're always human beings, but we went through these different stages. So we were a mineral at one time. And then we, then we became like a germ, you know, and then we, then we became like a, a, a fish, you know, and we took on all these different forms, right? So when we, when we make that connection with the, with, the, with the things in our world, with the water, you were talking about the water, you know, the water is sacred, you know, make that connection with the water or with a plant. We're singing those songs, we're making that connection because those songs are, are specific to that, uh, the nature of that yes. plant or animal. So we're singing to the spirit or the nature um, of the quality of, of that thing, you know. So that medicine, we're singing to it because we know that once we take that thing into our body, uh, it's going to help balance us out and help us get to where we need to be, right? And as I said before, the reason why we make relationships with everything is to help each other out to get where we need to be, to make a balance, you know? So medicine and healing and, and everything in the indigenous way of life is about balance, is about creating a balance in the community, about creating balance in our world, within ourselves and within everything. So that's what all these things are about. It's about creating balance. And uh, these are the ways I was taught. These are the things I was taught from many different elders. Another one that I'm thinking about too, I wanna say his name now is Eugene King uh, from, uh, from the Kaguantan clan, the Eagle clan um, up in Alaska. Uh, he was one of the elders I got to uh, when I was living out in Issaquah and uh, learning about uh, the Baha'i faith and, and learning about different indigenous uh, things. He would speak quite often because he would come down from Alaska because he had relatives there, him and his wife. I, ne I never really met his wife as much Melba, uh, but uh, he was uh, blind, d didn't see, um, and uh, an elder. And uh, man, when he would speak, it's like the whole world, the whole universe went silent. <laughs> it's like, wow, you just, you just sit there and listen to him, you know, with bated breath, you know, and he would just take you, you know, he would just take you to another place while he was talking. Um, just such a spiritual person. Um, and, and then when he was done talking, you're like, you're like waking up from a dream or something. You're like, oh, where was I? What just happened? <laughs> you know? Just like that, just such a, a wonderful soul. Um, I got I got a few times to be able to sit in his presence and, and listen to him speak. And it was uh, really, really wonderful, really wonderful. But I like to, I, it's, 
it's he's also in the spirit world as well so i always i always share these things and 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 it's good to share your teachers and share the people who have helped you along the way and think about them fondly especially when they're in the spiritual world where we're taught that the baha'i way you know that uh that we have this connection uh with the spiritual world and our relatives there and when we think fondly about them and, and remember them, it brings it like it really brings light to their world and lifts their spirits. So um, we're taught that in the Baha'i writings. Um, I don't remember exactly where that is, but it is there. Um, I believe Abdul Baha shared a little bit of that. That may be in some answered questions. Um, but uh, and also in our native way, we're taught that too. You know, the native indigenous way um, is that that. Uh, these people are here with us, you know, that we're always connected with them. Um, and they're always uh, a part of our lives and moving through our lives. And we're a part of theirs. Um, and uh, there is this special relationship with the spirit world in this world. And, and it's important to value and respect that. And, and also to mention those people fondly and, and, and pray for them and, and as they pray for us, you know, that we, we both can be uplifted and helped and supported. So, you know, these are, I don't, I don't know a lot about the spiritual world, but I know it's pretty different. <laughs> At least that's what I hear. <laughs> you know, as it's described in the writings, it's as different from this world as the womb is, uh, different from the world we're in now, you know. So it's very, very different, but uh, to always remember our relatives and to think fondly of them, you know, and that's a big part of the indigenous way of thinking and looking at things and really appreciating our relatives. And, and quite often, um, I was also taught, and this is something uh, Lee, uh, Lee Brown brought to me, is that he said, we, we think about our relatives in seven generations. When we're saying prayers, we think seven generations behind us, or, or, or you could say before us, the people that came before us, we think seven generations back and pray for them, you know? And then we also think ge seven generations ahead and pray for them and think about them in a good way that we all can be uplifted, right? And uh, he shared with me one time and he really cornered me because I was like, I was not declaring and I knew a lot about the faith and. And I was being, uh, I was kind of dodging and weaving. <laughs> and he really cornered me. <laughs> it was like, uh, it was like, uh, you know, when you sign that card, seven generations of your family on both sides are lifted up. <laughs> so probably shouldn't wait. <laughs> he didn't say that, but he was like, you know, he was really, really impressing on me that how they would be lifted up if I signed that card. <laughs> And, and sure enough, I did, and I was very elated by it, and felt very um, happy, and and you know that my families were lifted up and raised up and blessed. Um, so I was happy about that. So I want to talk, go back to the drum here, and 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 maybe center a little bit back towards these songs. Um, uh, so the the drum, you know, they say the drum is the heartbeat of the the Indian nation. You know, it's the heartbeat of the people. Uh, and we could say it's a heartbeat of the indigenous nation because we know the drum is used all over the world um, for prayer and, and spiritual things. But it's also a very powerful instrument. Um, it evokes a lot of powerful emotions. Uh, you know, they, they, used to, they used the drums in, even in warfare, you know, like they, have the, they used to have the drummers that would come, you know, they would be the first ones out there drumming up a storm, you know, saying, we're coming, you know, and, and uh, you know, in the boats, they would be the Vikings, boom, 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 you know. Um, so these are, you know, it's a very powerful thing. It's, it, it evokes very powerful feelings. Um, uh, so we try to respect it and understand it. So this, so this drum, the drum, I think this is a deer hide. Yeah, I think this is a deer hide drum that I have. And I got this uh, as a gift. I was actually sharing similar things uh, that I'm sharing with you today with a, a group of kids out of the Waldorf School. I don't know if you're familiar with the Waldorf School. They're pretty open-minded out there and they, they try to take uh, learning from a whole different direction. 
um, and be open-minded about the way they approach things. So they're really open to having people come in and share things that aren't usual, uh, aren't usually there. And uh, so um, this drum, you know, um, what I was saying earlier is like it, you know, usually it takes a while to get a drum, you know, back in the day, they used to demand a lot more of you, um, you know, that you would uh, first uh, hunt the animal that, that you're going to get your drum from. But a lot of prayer would go into hunting uh, the animal, the deer or whatever. Um, first, you really pray about it. And then you track the animal. You go out and track the animal and you watch it, you know, sometimes for weeks. You just watch, you track that animal and watch it, you know, watch what it does, how it deals with its family, maybe, uh, you know, how it, how, what it eats, uh, when it eats, what it does. You get to know everything about that animal. Um, you know, so when it came time, you know, you, you, you'd see that animal as your relative, you know. So when it came time to taking the life of your relative, you would understand the value of what that is. You would understand the meaning of what that is and what that animal is given to you. You know, I'm not a hunter. I've never hunted. I've never tracked. So I don't really know that experience, but I only know what I was shared with me. And these are the things that were shared with me. Um, you know, and, um, and oftentimes the one that you were tracking wasn't the one that would come to you. So they say that the animal spirits are, are one spirit. There's a deer spirit. And although there's different deer, all those spirits are also connected. So sometimes when you pray uh, for, a, for food or a drum or whatever, because you know all the things, uh, what did Kevin Locke say? So Kevin Locke said this the other day. Do you guys know Kevin Locke, who he is? Um, uh, you know, uh, Lakota from Standing Rock. He was saying for, for them, the buffalo, it's the same way. You know, the, the buffalo is what they call the one-stop shopping <laughs> because they get everything from the buffalo. They get everything from the buffalo, you know, they, you know, and they have this really close, beautiful relationship with the buffalo spirit and the buffalo nations. Um, and they, they make this strong connection you know, and they value and respect it dearly um, because that's life. Everything they have comes from that buffalo. And if they don't, you know, you know, they're taught to appreciate those things that are given to you because sacrifice is hard, you know, sacrifice is difficult. So when, uh, you know, when we make sacrifices for each other and, and when these animals make sacrifices for us, that's difficult. It's a, that's what, what a sacrifice is. It, you know, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's suffering. And that's part of uh, where the word comes from, uh, sacrifice. Um, so when these animals make that sacrifice, you know, you really respect and appreciate it. That's why you're taught to go out there and look at that. And, and the same with the trees, from the hoop, from the hoop in this drum, you know the hoop in the drum the trees and then the sinew that's in the back you know that's part of the animal's legs and you know it keeps them moving you know so all these things um all these things are a part of that animal you know and you really appreciate so so before you even pick up this drum you're taught those things you know you're taught that this is the heartbeat of the people this is the heartbeat of the, the nation, the heartbeat of the people, and you respect it, you know, you honor it, it's your heartbeat, so you respect it and honor it as you respect and honor yourself, and so, and it's your path, it's your connection to everything, it's your connection to all things, so when you play that drum, you're connecting to everything, you know, it's holy, and it's sacred, it's, you're making this beautiful connection with everything, and you're understanding the sacrifice, and, and the, since this is a deer hide, when you play that, the deer are singing. The deer are singing with you. So when you hit that drum, the deer is singing with you. And so is the, the wood that's on there. The trees are singing with you. So um, everything is vibrating with that song of, of you know, so different, uh, different drums, different drum hides have different uh, 
uh, teachings. And different teachings come from them. So you have different songs with different hides. Um, and, and as I was taught, for every, every plant that exists, there's a song for that plant. For every animal that exists, there's a song for that animal. So as you work with these things and use these things, you know, you make this connection. And that's what it's all about, is making this connection. So th these are the things I wanted to share with you all before we really get into that song, is to understand these kind of really fundamental kind of ways of looking at things and these connections. So before we pick up that drum, we, we understand what we're doing, you know. Um, and when we're making medicine songs with this song that I'm going to share with you is a medicine song. When we're making these medicines, medicine songs, we have to be very careful, too, and, 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 and gentle, um, because this is powerful. This is the power of all things. So when medicine people say they work with all things, that's what they mean. So when you're talking about uh, the power of all things, so you're talking about the power of the weather. You know, you're talking about um, the power of an earthquake, the power of a, of a windstorm. You know, it, does, it only takes one, uh, one windstorm to wipe us out as human beings. We're very fragile. It only takes one volcano to level everything, right? We're just small. We're not very big. You know, we're just small, fragile little things. So when we pick up that drum, we're making that connection with everything. And those powers, those powers, the wind, everything, these powers that exist in our universe, and these powers are within us. So it's a reflection of the same thing. So everything that's on the outside is on the inside, right? So we're making that connection between the, the outside and the inside. And there's a really fascinating writing in the Baha'i writings. Uh, it says that, uh, that you have never seen and there are no two people uh, that exist that are both inwardly and outwardly united. And, he, and, and this is reference to the Bab and Baha'u'llah, that, that holy beings, holy beings are completely in balance with everything that's on the outside and everything that's on the inside. So everything that they believe and say is all in connection with everything that's happening on the outside. You know, that's that teaching where, you know, don't promise that which you don't keep. Don't, you know, don't break your promises. Because if you say something, you know, coming from the inside out, that should be the same thing that's happening. You know, don't, uh, don't be a hypocrite. You know, that's that teaching. Don't, uh, you know, don't uh, say things or don't try to own things that don't belong to you. You know, that, that's where honesty is. You know, that's what that is all about, is, is, is the truth, is, is understanding the unity of reality itself and how this whole outside universe is all connected with the inside universe and how we're connected with everything, you know, how we're connected with everything, how all these things work together and religion is making relationships and spirituality is making relationships with all these things so that all these things can begin to be united and you can understand as a human being because we're evolving right we're not perfect you know we're evolving we're learning and growing and developing so this is the path is we're under the path for evolving is understanding how these things are all connected and how they all work together right and the, and the value of each of these things. So I'll, I'll kind of uh, finish this part of the sharing with, that's why, uh, you know, we're talking about, uh, we call it race unity. You know, we call it race unity. Um, is our inability to understand how these things are connected and function and work together. They call it a sickness. They have this sickness, right? Um, that we're refusing to see how these things are connected and work together and function together and how these things are beautiful together and why they were made specifically the way they are. You know, that, that different, uh, you know, different human beings, what I was talking earlier, they were given the guardianship. You know, they were given a teaching. Uh, the, white, the white men 
were given, the white people were given the teaching of fire. Uh, the black people were given the teaching of water, right? Uh, and they say the yellow people were given the teaching of wind, right? And the red people were given the teaching of the earth. You know, native people are, 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 uh, are earth people. They're, that's their teaching. That's what they bring to humanity. That's their teaching. And you'll find that, that Native American people are the master growers. They, they, they designed corn. Corn didn't exist. Corn came from uh, the Huicho people who have basically lived the same way in Mexico for over 70,000 years up until recently. But they took, they took a thing called teosinte, uh, which is like a wheat-like grass, and they hybridized it over many, many years and made corn out of it, right? And now the whole world uses corn because of what the Huicho people gave us, right? So, uh, and in Mexico, they made uh, like 300 different types of potatoes, you know, tons of different types of beans and squash, master growers master growers um and in fact they had the reason why and i'll and i'll and i'll kind of i know we're running over time here a little bit um but the reason why they had so many potatoes is because they could grow it no matter what the season was like if you had a long winter or short summer or whatever so they had a potato for every season a potato for every uh drought a potato that would grow no matter what was happening right? They were, they were able to create, you know, so, but the Europeans, they brought these potatoes back to Europe, but they only brought like one or two species back. But it, it impacted the entire, uh, entire continent uh, because number one, potatoes are easy to grow. They're a good source of food. Um, so what happened is people that were starving became wealthy because they had potatoes. It changed the entire way Europe handled things um, because it was so easy to grow and so beneficial, right? Well, what happened is because they only took one type of potato, what happened in Ireland is that they had a, um, they had a, a sickness that came over the potato um, and it killed all their crops, but they didn't, they didn't have an alternative if they had brought more over, they would have had an alternative, but they didn't. So that's why people starved. That's the potato famine that happened in Ireland. That's why they starved, because they didn't, they didn't have another alternative. So these master growers, these earth people, so every, every relative around that, that medicine circle, that medicine wheel, those four directions have a teaching, have a sacred teaching, have a a responsibility, they call it a guardianship to these teachings, right? And they break it up into just four, right? That doesn't mean if you're not yellow or you're not quite red, <laughs> you know, it's, it's all of, you know, it's a, it's a microcosm. It's a very small way of looking at, at the entire universe and seeing everything, that everything has its place. Everything has its purpose. So this is the sickness of racism is that we have forgotten that and, and don't understand how we all need each other in the wheel of life and that we all have something valuable and something important to share. And that until we have everybody in this circle, we'll never have peace. So that, that's the reason why we need to uh, bring everybody together to remind us, we're all one people, we're all related. We're all one thing. And that was, that's what this Baha'i faith is, is that, you know, reminding us this great holy being that came, that everybody was like, hey, there's going to be a time where we're all brought back together and peace will reign in this world and we'll have goodness again. And that's what these teachings are for. And that's how, in, in, in the way these, uh, in some ways, I'm sharing with you how some of these uh, indigenous teachings are connected to the Baha'i faith and, and how they're one thing and why they're one thing, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there for that aspect of it. I think that's enough, um, probably more than enough. <laughs> I hope that, um, I hope that, 
and I appreciate your patience. And um, I think now's a good time. If everybody still has a little bit of time, maybe 20 minutes left, uh, we can get into the song. Um, and what I'm going to also do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, send you a recording. I'm I'm working on it. I, I have these old tapes, so I've got these songs that I'm going to be sharing um, from uh, from some old friends back in the day in the late '80s with an indigenous Baha'i group called the Warriors of Light, and some people around them, uh, different indigenous Baha'is. Who are, who are sharing and working together to bring some of these out things out and share them. Like I was saying, there's some songs that are not to be shared. There's some, there, there's songs for everything. Like I said, there's a song for every plant, every animal. There's a song for all different ceremonies, for coming of age ceremonies. Um, there's songs for families, there's family songs. You know, not all these songs are meant to be shared, right? Um, and a lot of medicine songs are not shared. Some are really powerful and they're just not shared. Um, but these songs were given to us and were meant to be shared. So that's why I'm sharing them today, um, because uh, they, were, they were asked. And the song we're going to learn today is a women's healing song. And I'm kind of su not surprised that there's all women here. <laughs> so uh, uh, so I'm, I'm humbled and grateful that you're all here. And, and, uh, and uh, uh, I'm hoping that you'll take this song in a good way and, and uh, you'll learn it in your own way um, and share it, you know, it's meant to be shared. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna actually, speaking of sharing, I'm gonna share my screen um, here. Uh, and uh, okay, one momento. What do we see? We see the women's healing song. Perfect. The lyrics. Yeah. As you can see, this is, so this song has been around for a long time. And as you can see, I have, uh, they, they, and, and most of the time, uh, these songs are not uh, shared this way. They're shared orally. You know, they're, like I was saying, like the aunties or uncles will share, or in this case, some of the, some of, you know, your father and mother will share certain songs with you. Um, uh, but these songs are usually not written down. They're just, they're just shared orally. So most of the native world and understanding, once again, is shared orally. And that's why, um, that's why uh, indigenous communities are so misunderstood because a lot of this information is oral, right? So, um, because you're not gonna learn about it or know about it unless you grow up in that community and, and people share these things with you, so. Um, so as you see, this song was given to Iron Wing, a Soto Chippewa, uh, who is also a Baha'i. Um, and they say um, he shared that uh, he got, I don't know exactly where he learned this song from. I, I didn't get this information. And, and part of protocol, and well, I will say is part of protocol in singing a song like this, especially with people uh, that you don't always know is, is sharing where the song came from. What's the provenance of the song? Where did it come from? How did it come to you? And, and how does it relate to you as an individual? So, you know, after you introduce yourself, you, you talk about the song and you share, you know, this song came to me uh, from Chris Cullen. Um, it's originally uh, sung by Iron Wing, who's a Soto Chippewa Baha'i. So you'll share these things as you, you know, before you sing this song. And, uh, and this song was given to Iron Wing uh, in a dream or, we, or a vision. We're not sure exactly what it was. Um, so the Thunderbirds, the Thunder Beings, um, they're, they're some of the great spiritual teachers. Um, you know, the, the thunder clouds, you know, the, those, the lightning, the lightning beings. They say that humans uh, came into existence uh, with the help of lightning. Um, we're taught that, and it's also theorized uh, by current scientists as well. Um, that, uh, that it was lightning that hit that water that helped spark that germ of life. Um, so these thunder beings, they're the ones that we're, we're, we're connecting to. They're the ones that gave us this song uh, through Iron Wing in this vision. 
or this this uh, or this dream. So he was given responsibility to the song and was told to give this song to everyone he meets because the women and children are having a difficult time. Um, so that's why this song is meant to be shared because it's that it's that it's that healing energy. Um, and uh, and uh, so before you share it, um, just you know, share a little bit about the song and where it came from, where it came from, and how how you received it. And if you want to something personal, that's up to you. Whatever whatever you're feeling at the time. And and let me say, um, you know, if protocol is important, but what is more 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 important <laughs> is that that you connect with the song with your heart. That you connect with your community with your heart. That you're always walking with your heart. Um, heart first, you know, protocol second, but preferably both in, in harmony. Um, so it's important to have that protocol and to be respectful and, and to help people connect to what it is that you're sharing. Um, but more importantly, that your heart is there. And when you're singing, it doesn't matter if you're a professional singer or not. <laughs> you know, you're not up there to perform uh to the people uh this you know just like a prayer we're talking to the spirits we're talking to the great spirit we're talking to wakam tanka you know that great spirit that holy being they and, and they call wakam tanka um they call him the great mystery because we don't know what it is and in the writings they say that anything that we know about god is our mere imagination you know it's just what we're imagining because we simply can't conceive what it is. But what we're doing is trying to make that connection with that which we don't really understand with our heart to the best of our ability. And, that, and it doesn't matter whether, it, whether uh, you know, the a sound is perfect by human standards. What matters is that, that you're making this prayer in a good way. And that's really important. And I want to impress upon you that. You know, there's a lot of the elders that are very respected and, and honored in, in the community. But man, when they sing these songs, they just tear it up. They, you know, they're, they're, you know their voice is, you know, is it, isn't like anything you're going to hear on the radio. I'll tell you that. But, but you feel it. You feel it. You know, you feel the song and you're just like, you know, wow, you know, and, and, it, and it really penetrates. Um, so that's what's you know that's what's uh, I think more important um, when you do this. So um, I'm going to share a little bit. So as you can see, and I'm going to I'm going to send this to you too, so you can have these words and you can practice on your own. And I'm going to send you also a recording uh, that was done uh, by um, uh, Kizankia Davis, uh, uh, native Baha'i, and also. Um, uh, uh, sorry, not not chips, but um, why am I forgetting his name? I'll tell you later. <laughs> Sometimes I just space names. Sorry, I'm, I've always been a little bit of a space cat. I've always tried to be better at. I'm, not, I'm I am far away from my academic as probably humanly possible. <laughs> but I try to I try to be better with details and remember names and, and things like that. But uh, you know, bear with me. So thank you for being patient. But I'll, I'll share it with you. Uh, when I send this to you, I'll share all the information. And, and that way you know where it came from and how it came to you. And I'll have that recording with the, with the songs on it as well. But we'll go over it now. Um, basically, the words mean merciful God, you have given us everlasting life. Or that, that great mystery, you have given us everlasting life. And sometimes the songs don't need to be uh, complicated. They don't need to be... You know, they don't have to, you know, they don't, they, they don't have to be uh, super intricate to have potency. Um, so this is one of those songs. Um, and how you say these words is Iche Manitu, Gimi, Gimi Nichiwa, Gimi Nichiwa, Iche Manitu, Gimi Nichiwa, Gidiwin Gagiwin, Ga gi gi. And then the rest are what they call vocables. So they're, they don't really mean anything. They're just kind of sounds. Um, 
and we'll usually do this. So the way I sing it, and and you may decide to sing it a little differently, and and that that's okay within a certain boundaries, right? Um, I sing it differently than when you hear the guy on the tape sing it. I sing it a little bit differently than he does. Um, you just kind of need to follow your heart about which way you want to sing it. You kind of make it your own in that sense, but you try to pronounce the words properly if you can. Iche, Manitu, Gimi, Nichiwa, Gidiwin, Gagiwin, Gagi, Gi. And that's Hey, Hey, Yahweh, Hey, Hey, Yahweh, Hey, Hey, Yahweh, and then Wado, Hado to end it. And it's a way of just. So, um, when you're the first part of the song, when you're singing it, um, you're reaching out, you know, you're reaching out, you're calling, you know, since this came from the Thunderbirds, uh, from the Thunder Beings, you know, you're reaching out to them. You're, you're, you're reaching out and saying, hey, you guys gave me this song. Help me, you know, help me. You're reaching out to the creator through, the, through these Thunder Beings and asking them for help you know, reaching out, you know, and, uh, and asking, right, and that's all we can do as human beings, you know, we're, like I said, we're small, we're just small little, uh, in, in Dineta, and Navajo Nation, it, they call us the five-fingered ones, the earth surface people, we're just walking on the surface, you know, there's a lot of beings inside the earth and around us, but we're just one of the many beings that exist, you know, so, so us small beings are going to reach out and, and try to uh, try to uh, make that connection. So why don't we why don't we try and and uh, sing this song uh, together? We'll say it together, um, or let's just say the words together. How does that sound? Does that sound better? Does, does anybody have any questions right now? Okay, okay. So, uh, so once again, Iche. So everybody say that. Mani tu. Gimi. Nichiwa. Giddy win. Gagi win. Ga gi gi. Or you can say gay. I say gay usually. Gi or gay. Um, Gi is a, a more most specific, uh, most appropriate way to pronounce it. Um, so, um, uh, can uh, can you guys take yourselves off mute? I want to hear you. Um, maybe okay. start with uh, Valerie and uh, Mari. I want to. You want to try to say those words? Sure. Niche mani tu, di mi ni chi wa, giddy win, gaggy win, gaggy gi. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so um, I don't know if anybody, anybody brought drums today. Did anybody bring a drum? Yeah. Or a rattle. Rattle's good too. Um, yeah, I, I remember one of your questions, Nada, was about instruments uh, earlier, and uh, you know, the drum and the rattle are two really primary instruments that you'll see a lot in Native communities. Um, different rattles and different drums for different communities. Um, you'll see different types, like in the Northwest Coast, you'll see rattles that are carved in different, uh, like ravens or eagles, mm. and uh, you know, in uh, uh, from uh, Diné, Dineta, uh, from Navajo Nation, where, where uh, my relatives are from, they use a gourd rattle, um, but they also use the gourd rattle in the Native American church. Yeah. And they came from, that originally came from the Kiowa. Um, Kiowa people, the Native, and, and then before the Kiowa people, the Native American church, the, those ceremonies originated from, once again, from the Huicho people um, who, who were apparently the center of a lot of really wonderful things. Mm. There's a lot of people uh, use these, the Native American, they call it the Native American church or the teepee ceremony where they stay up all night and pray. So one I was sharing earlier. 
So um, maybe uh, I'll lightly play the drum and I'll play the drum. The first part of this song is when you're calling, you're reaching out and you're calling. So you're playing kind of fast. Like that, right? And then the second of the the second part is more of a, a half time. So it starts like this. Uh, uh, Zoom breaks up with the audio. You hear that okay? It sounded clear. Yeah, thank you. Good, good. So once again, so that first part is that calling, you know, you're reaching out and calling. And, and then that second part is, is where you're celebrating. It's almost like you're celebrating because um, the vocables, because you know the prayer is going to be answered, you know, and it's a, it's a, it's a, a way of celebrating as a community, you know, that you know that this prayer is going to be answered and that the spirits will uh, help guide you, that your relatives, when I say spirits, or, you know, people say angels or the concourse, whatever you want to call it, these spirits will help and guide you and help, help get what you need, just like we help each other get what we need, um, you know, and create that balance that we look for uh, in our lives, you know. Um, that healing, you know, health is all about balance is, is, and that healing and, and well-being is all about balance in our community and in ourselves. So that's, that's about all I have to share. Um, I, I tried to keep it at two hours. I know this is a long time. Once again, I appreciate y'all hanging in here and uh, listening so intently. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm deeply honored by all of you being here. And, and um, it's a super honor for me to share this song. Um, because I know it's a, it's for a song, for me, it's been super helpful. Uh, it's a powerful song. And, uh, you know, and, and you may want to just sing it to yourself and, and you know, and, and kind of get to know the song, kind of make a relationship with the song a little bit um, before you ever share it. You know, you may just, you know, whenever you want to share it, when you're comfortable, that's totally fine. You know, just take your time and, and get to know the song and, and uh, sing it, you know, and, and maybe you'll have a drum, maybe you won't, maybe you'll have a rattle, maybe you won't. I've seen people like, I've done this, I've pounded on my leg for a drum, <laughs> you know, uh, or, or, you know, whatever, whatever you need to do, um, uh, whatever you got and whatever you need to do to, to, to make it happen. Um, you know, um, and oftentimes uh, when people make drums, um, uh, they give them away, you know, um, I've never made my own drum. I've actually never made a drum. I'm kind of like lucky here. <laughs> I, I haven't done it yet. So I need to learn how to make a drum and give it away because I've been given two drums. I've been given two drums. So I need to learn how to make a drum and give it away. And uh, uh, Mari, yes, you have a question? Well, um, my mom, she, she, she makes drums and rattles. And... Um, yeah. Wonderful. I just have to say that. Wonderful. Yes, and and there's there's people out there that make drums and 
and uh, and uh, uh, and it's good to it's better to to uh, make a drum and give it away, um, you know, use it for a while or something. But you know, that's part of that. You know, it's it's building those relationships, those connections with other people. You know, when we give something away, and you know, quite oftentimes we'll receive something that we need as well. Um, and we don't we don't ask for it. We just kind of let the spirits do what they need to do and. They'll take care of us. We trust them. We trust them to to get what we need when we when we need it. You know, that's part of that faith and trust that we'll have what we need when we need it. We'll get what we need when we need it, and and uh, you know it'll all come to pass as it needs to as it needs to. So you know it's that that concept of uh, prosperity uh, and abundance rather than scarcity. You know, that you know everything. Will, will happen as it needs to happen and get to where it needs to go eventually. Sometimes it takes a long time, but it gets there. Sometimes it takes a lot longer than we want it to, <laughs> but it does get there. <laughs> Anyways, once again, that's all I, I have to share. If there's any other questions or thoughts, yeah. Chris, on closing, would you mind singing it one more time? I feel like I was in learning mode and I would just like to feel it is that possible yeah absolutely and something that yeah. uh, that I, I neglected to do that we uh there's two things that i neglected to do that um that are really important and 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 we all forget things and and, and before i saw so i will sing this song yes um but i want to share this before i leave because this is really important and i can't believe i missed both of them <laughs> <laughs> Number one is that every time, you know, we have a conversation like this, um, we make a prayer and I, we never made a prayer, but that's okay. It's okay. It all worked out good. And, you know, I made a prayer actually before I did this gathering. So um, uh, I made a prayer before this gathering. So I, I, we did that. But the other thing that I didn't do um, that's really important to do is to uh, show appreciation and acknowledgement uh, for whose land we're on, you know, um, you know, we're, you know, the, 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 the caretakers of this land um, are the Duwamish and the, and the Suquamish and the, and the Salish, the coastal Salish people and the Snoqualmie. So this is, this is their land. And, um, and it never really belongs to them, you know, as indigenous, that thought process, the indigenous thought process is you don't really own anything. You know, you're just you know, you're a custodian, you're just taking care of it, you know, you know, and, uh, and as I said, the native people are earth people, they know how to take care of the natural order. Um, uh, if, if you look at, you know, uh, uh, bio, the most biodiverse lands are held by indigenous people. 80% uh, of the most biodiverse lands are held by indigenous people around the world. So, um, they're they're excellent. Uh, Native people are excellent at taking care of the earth and, and connecting with it and growing. That's their strength. That's their guardianship. That's their teaching. So um, to acknowledge that, but also I wanted to share too is that one of the things that the Duwamish are trying to do is to get uh, recognized from the federal government, recognition as a tribe. So uh, if you go to their website, you can go to the website um, and sign a petition. So if you do that, um, that will help them, and and just remind people too, you know, when you're um, when you're when you're sharing these things, you know, whose land we're on, that they're the caretakers of this land. They know it better than anyone else. They know how to take care of it. So we look to them, to you know, when it when it comes to taking care of this land, you know, for guidance, and we also um, uh, appreciate them because they're all they're we're living on on their on their their land that they take care of you know so we want to appreciate them and say prayers to them and respect them and and if we can support them you know and you know like i said the duwamish are trying to get recognized so that's something that would really help them so if you can do something like that for them that would be great um any uh last questions yeah perhaps. i was just sorry and i'll go ahead <laughs> Okay, just a quick question. Perhaps I missed it, but what language is this? Uh, so this is, uh, uh, this is, uh, shoot. Um, so it's, there are several different languages that are very similar. Uh, uh, 
I don't know what the actual name of this particular language is, but it's a similar language all around. Um, it's south of the Anishinaabe, uh, but part, so it's part of the Anishinaabe. So it kind of all mixes together, right? Um, and there's a bunch of different languages within each of these areas. So um, unfortunately, I don't know. Um, uh, you would uh, you would probably be safe in saying that this was, uh, you know, since he was Soto and Chippewa, uh, that, that would be safe in saying that it's part of the Soto and Chippewa language when you're describing it. So that's a really great question, you know, because you want people to understand these things. Um, and you, once again, you don't have to be perfect. You just do the best you can, and people will see that. So that yeah, answer. that... That was a one question, but another question I had was if you were to practice that song, would it be disrespectful if like you changed it a little bit? Like not change any wording or anything, but just um, like, like the way in you, which you say it, or I don't know. Um, there's some room for that, um, but once again, you gotta be careful um, because okay. the way these songs are, uh, I've changed it, and once again, you'll hear uh, when I send you the recordings, so you'll hear a little bit. Unfortunately, the recordings didn't work out, and I'm trying to fix them. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to right now. I'm gonna try again tonight to, to make these recordings from these old tapes from the 80s. And, uh, uh, excuse me, one second. Uh, hang on. Put myself on mute. I need to chat with my wife just real brief. Uh, thanks. My wife just wanted to chat with me briefly. Um, yeah, so it's just just a, a certain amount of carefulness. Maybe when you first start singing it, sing it the way they do it. And then as you kind of get more comfortable with it, see what your heart tells you where it needs to go. Um, but just be careful um, because the songs are revealed a specific way for a specific reason. Um, but uh, there sometimes there just, but I, if you notice too, though, that um, um, you'll hear certain songs that are repeated in ceremonies. And as you move around to different places, to different uh, areas and tribes, they're sung, uh, they are sung a little bit differently. And that's okay. So, so don't be too strict about it, but just, you know, the more important, what people always tell me is, you know, follow your heart. You know, that's the, the biggest thing. And that's, that's where everything begins and ends, right? Is that, is that Thank you. your answer? Is that kind of... Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. How, how are we doing? Any last questions? I know we want to go. It's been a while. And I appreciate once again that you guys have been super patient and, and hanging out with me. I just want to say thank you so much. My heart says thank you so much. <laughs> okay, great. All right, well, maybe we could get together again at some point uh, in the future, you know, a month or so, and, and, and just see, you know, maybe we could sing these songs together, you know, after we've had time to kind of work with them a little bit and feel them out and uh, so on and so forth. Does that, does that work? I'd love to. Cool. Um, can someone offer a, uh, after I sing this song, maybe well, uh, a closing prayer, but I'll sing this song one more time. DJ Penny to give me Nichiwa, get it when Kagi when Kagi.
Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for sharing really the, the understanding and um, the meaning behind this. this. It was just so beautiful. Thank you. Good, yeah. Thanks for all, like once again, for sticking in and hanging out and uh, hopefully we can do it again. And I really appreciate everybody's, everybody's company here. And, and, uh, looking forward to hearing these songs. And, and uh, uh, when you're ready, we have another song that we can share too. So um, I may Thank send that so with the other song uh, just so you can have, hear it ahead of time. But, you know, just focus on one and see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and Chris, can you, would you mind sharing the, um, the healing circle information, if that's something that you can do um, for Sunday? What time is it on Sunday? Yeah, no, it's, it's one o'clock on Sunday. Um, and uh, I, I do have a Facebook site too. Um, uh, so, but um, I don't know. Uh, if I have everyone's email here, but if I send out an email, uh, will you guys pass it on? Don, can you pass it on too? Yeah, sure. That would be great. So I'll send that out and, along with uh, with the lyrics here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's perfect. Thanks, Chris. Thank what you. a nice way. Happy Nauru's, everybody. What a beautiful yeah, right? way to spend yeah. the last day. Yeah, of the fast. Yeah. So beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Happy Nauru's. Happy Nauru's. Thank you. All right, Thank you. We'll see you. Bye. Hello, Pa. Hello, Pa. Hello, Pa. <laughs> Bye. Bye, 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 Mari. Mari. Bye. Bye, Kimmy. Bye, Valerie. Bye, Don. Bye, Chris. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye, Chris. Bye, Kimmy. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.